What's up you freaking genius dads? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to use the distance formula to write an equation of a parabola when you're given the focus, the vertex, or directrix, right? So we're going to go over a problem breaking those down. So here it just says use the distance formula to write an equation of the parabola with a focus at 0, 5 and a vertex at the origin at 0, 0, okay? So first of all, let's start with the vertex. That should sound pretty familiar. So that's just the highest or lowest point on a parabola. And in this case, it's at the origin, right? It's at zero comma zero, so right there. Okay, the problem also tells us that we have this thing called a focus at zero comma five, so let's plot that point. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? So at zero five, we have this thing called a focus. So we have a focus at zero five. Okay, now the only thing we're missing here is something called the directrix, and that's simply a straight line that is the same distance away from the vertex as the focus is, all right? So if the focus is five spots away from the vertex, that means we have a straight line called the directrix, and this is one, two, three, four, five spaces away from the vertex. Okay, so this line right here, uh, the directrix is at y is equal to negative five, right? They're both five spaces away from the vertex. Okay, now we just have to figure out which way our parabola opens. So is it going to open down like that, or is it going to open up like that? Well, in this case, it's going to open up like this. And the reason for that is because the parabola always, uh, you can think of it like as a mouth, okay? It always wants to eat the focus point, okay? This focus point should always be inside of the parabola. And then the vertex is always, or sorry, the directrix is always on the outside. Okay, and a couple other things to point out here. Well, now that we have our parabola drawn, we have our vertex, right? The axis of symmetry for a parabola always runs through the vertex, right? So if we drew our axis of symmetry, it would just run through the parabola like that. Okay, so the vertex always lies on the axis of symmetry, and that's also true for the focus. Okay, this point also always lies on the axis of symmetry. And the directrix, this line down here, is always perpendicular. It always creates a right angle with the axis of symmetry. <coughs> yeah, no, I'm keeping that sneeze in here. Okay, and that's important to point out because if you had a parabola, so I'm just drawing another graph here, if you had a parabola that was let's say sideways like this, okay? In this case, the focus again would be on the inside of the parabola, so it would be right here, right? So it always looks like the parabola is eating focus. Uh, the vertex is still right here at zero, zero, and then the directrix you would actually draw vertically like that. Why? Well, where's the axis of symmetry for the parabola? Well, it's just right here. Right? And this directrix, like I said, is always perpendicular. It always creates a 90 degree angle with the axis of symmetry. Okay, so that's just a little heads up in case your problem has a parabola that's sideways. Okay, but we're gonna roll with this one right here. So the last thing we have to do to set up this problem is just, um, so we want an equation of the parabola, right? So we need to just pick a random point on this parabola anywhere, literally anywhere. I'll just put a point right there, okay? We have no idea where this point is on the coordinate system, uh, so we're just going to label this, uh, the coordinates, as x comma y. Okay, now a uh, really important thing to point out here is that another way the focus and the directrix are related to each other is that they are both the exact same distance away from any point on the parabola. Okay, so this point P, this random point that we just drew, uh, the distance from this point to the focus is the same distance from this point uh, straight down. That's an important point. It has to be straight down. It has to create a 90 degree angle with the directrix. Okay. So this is the same distance as this, right? So if the distance from P to F was five inches, that means the distance from P down to the direct, right? Straight down to the directrix would also be five inches. Okay. So the last thing we have to do here is just come up with some coordinates for this point right here where P intersects the directrix, right? So this point right here, let's see, we don't know the x coordinate for it, right? We don't know how far over it goes, but we do know how far down it goes, right? Negative five spaces. So we're going to say that the directrix is at x comma negative five, right? We don't know what the x coordinate is, but we do know the y. Okay, so that was kind of the big first step, I guess. Just coming up with coordinates for the focus, the random point on your parabola, 
and the directrix, all right? So now that we have those three points, now we can use the distance formula, which if you don't remember, uh, the distance between any two points on a graph, uh, the distance is equal to the square root of x sub two minus x sub one squared plus y sub two minus y sub one squared, all right? This whole thing is under this square root, this radical. Okay, so to come up with an equation, all we have to do is find the distance from our random point, right? Because the point lies on the parabola and that's what we're trying to write an equation for. So we just need to find the distance from our random point P to the focus. And we're gonna set that equal to the distance from our random point P down to the directrix. Okay, so we're gonna say that PF is equal to PD or the distance from PF is equal to the distance from PD, right? So the distance from P to F is equal to the distance from P to D. Okay, so before we use the distance formula, let's label our three points. Since we need to know what's X sub one, X sub two, and since we have three points, we're also gonna have to use X sub three, right? Uh, so this first point right here, point P, let's call this one X sub one and Y sub one. I said one, not two. Uh, the focus, we can call this one X sub two and Y sub two and the directrix we'll call this one x sub three and y sub three. Okay, so let's first find the distance from p to f. So the distance from p to f is gonna be equal to this, right? So it's gonna be equal to the square root of x sub two minus x sub one. So x sub two is zero, x sub one is x. So zero minus x squared plus y sub two minus y sub one is five minus y squared, right? Five minus y squared. Okay, and then we're gonna set this equal to our other distance right here. So from P to D. And since we're using P, uh, we're gonna use x sub one and y sub one, and we're finding the distance to D. So D down here is x sub three and y sub three, right? So we're gonna change these twos to threes since we're using our third point, right? So then the distance from P to D is gonna be X sub three minus X sub one. So that's gonna be X minus X, X minus X squared plus Y sub three minus Y sub one is negative five minus Y, right? Negative five minus Y squared. Okay, now the first thing I like to do here is get rid of the square roots or the radicals, okay? So to do that, we need to square this whole side. And remember, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other, right? So we have to square this whole side also, okay? So then over here, the radical or, or the square root is going to cancel out with the squared exponent. And then the exact same thing happens over here. This cancels out with this, all right? So then we can drop those and then we can just bring down what's in parentheses basically. So we'll have zero minus x squared plus uh, five minus y squared is equal to uh, x minus x squared plus negative five minus y squared, right? So now we can start simplifying these. Uh, zero minus x is equal to negative x. So here we're gonna have negative x squared uh, plus uh, five minus y squared, all right? So we can basically just multiply this out. So five minus y times five minus y. Okay, so we have a binomial times a binomial, so we can just FOIL that, right? And then we're gonna set that equal to this one over here. Let's see, x minus x is zero, so zero squared is just zero, so that just goes away. And we're just left with this one over here, right? So we have negative five minus y squared, so negative five minus y times negative five minus y. Oh my God, this problem is a pain in my ass. So uh, negative x squared is equal to positive x squared. And then we're gonna add that to this uh, right here. So let's FOIL this. So first of all, five times five is 25. Five times negative y is negative five y, uh, negative five y. And then negative y times negative y is positive y squared, right? And then that's equal to this one over here. So here we're gonna have positive 25, right? Negative five times negative five. Uh, negative five times negative y is positive five y, so plus five y, and then the inside, so plus five y, and then plus y squared. <sighs> this problem's a lot longer than I thought it'd be. That's what she said. Okay, so we multiplied everything out. Now let's combine like terms so we can reduce some of this stuff. So here we have x squared plus 25, uh, negative five y minus five y is negative 10 y, 
plus y squared, and that's equal to 25 plus 10y plus y squared, All right? I'm going to scroll down here, give us some extra room. Okay, so now let's just get all the y's on one side and the rest of our crap on the other side. Uh, let's move all the y's to this side and move everything else over there. So here, this x squared, I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it to the other side by subtracting x squared. Okay, so then here, those cancel out. Here, uh, positive 25, we'll subtract uh, 25 and we'll subtract 25. Those cancel out and those cancel out. Okay, now we're just left with a couple y terms, so let's bring these y terms over here. So here we're going to subtract 10y, right? Subtract 10y, and so those cancel out. And then here, uh, subtract y squared. So those cancel out, subtract y squared, those cancel out. Okay, so then on this side, we're left with negative 20y is equal to negative x squared, right? That's all we have left on this side. Okay, so solving for y over here, we'll divide both sides by negative 20, negative 20. Those cancel out, so then we're just left with y is equal to uh, negative divided by negative is a positive, so here we just have x squared over 20. Or we can factor out the denominator, write it as a fraction, so we could say that this is equal to 1 over 20 times x squared, right? Either one of those would work, right? So there's the equation of this parabola. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.